Welcome back to another episode of A Double-Edged Sword. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Super Mario Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is one of the most anticipated games of the year, along with that other Nintendo game that was also very anticipated. As we all know by now, Breath of the Wild knocked it out of the park, so can Super Mario Odyssey do the same thing? None of the footage used in this video is my own, it's taken from Vine Sauce. Link in the description and at the end of the video. There are three types of Mario games. Actually, there's a lot of types of Mario games. Okay, there are three main types of Mario games. You got your 2D classic Mario games, your 3D Mario games, and your 3D 2D Mario games. Mario Odyssey specifically falls into the camp of a 3D Mario game along the lines of 64 and Sunshine. In those games, you have an overworld where you can enter specific missions in specific open levels and collect stars or shines, respectively, sometimes out of order. In Odyssey, on the other hand, you jump on your ship, travel to a world, and you're free to explore and collect as many moons as possible. Some worlds are definitely larger than others, but most worlds have around 50 moons. Now, there are over 800 moons to collect, so you think the process of collecting moons would start to normalize after a while and stop feeling special? But honestly, with the exception of a few of the last moons, getting any moon always felt special. There are triple moons you get from beating bosses which are extra special, but I never felt annoyed collecting any moons, like I did in, say, Sunshine, collecting its blue coins. Also, collecting triple moons can change some aspects of the level, so you always feel like you're rewarded, kind of like what ukulele did. Then, there's the capture mechanic, which is an amazing evolution on the power-up system. Each enemy has their own controls and challenges, and with a few exceptions, it's kept simple, but it's hard to master. A lot of the bosses also incorporate these captures ability, which makes for some interesting boss fights. One of my highlights was this onion thing, which I found a blast to play as, and this octopus, which gives you a great sense of freedom and movement. The other big mechanic is the costume mechanic, that has Mario dressing up in all sorts of costumes that you can mix and match, a majority of them being references to Mario's past. Gameplay-wise, these costumes don't have any tangible effect, but they are pretty neat. Overall, the gameplay, while similar to previous 3D Mario games, it does some new and interesting things, and for that I'm giving it a golden. There are over 13 kingdoms, and in my opinion, none of them are bad, however, there definitely are some kingdoms I enjoyed more than others. There are kingdoms that are large, and there are kingdoms that are small. There are kingdoms that are wide open, and there are kingdoms that are somewhat linear. Each one does have its own unique style that sets it apart from every other one, even if they do occasionally share similar ideas. My two favorite kingdoms are the Sand Kingdom and the Metro Kingdom. They fall into that category of large and open, so there are tons to explore and tons to see. They both have large environments to explore and find a plethora of moons. Not wanting to spoil anything, one of the few kingdoms I didn't like was the Luncheon Kingdom, which kind of felt underwhelming. It's a large kingdom, but it felt tedious and not as exploration friendly as some of the others. However, at the end of the day, most of the kingdoms are amazing, and the good ones far exceed the bad ones, so I'm giving it an amazing. This is the tightest controls we've seen in a Mario game since Sunshine, and they may be even better than Sunshine. If you master the controls, you can do next to anything. It really gives you a sense of true freedom when it comes to platforming. I recommend mastering diving into your hat as it doubles your versatility. Each capture ability has its own set of controls, but they keep it simple so you don't have to memorize 50 control schemes. I do have to mention that the game does recommend motion controls, but for a majority of my playtime I played with just a pro controller and everything worked out fine. I mean every once in a while I had to waggle the controller to do a higher jump or climb faster, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. The only time motion controls really can get in the way is having to shake or do a hat spin in handheld mode, but overall the controls and handling are so refined I'm going to give it a golden. The style of this game reminds me of previous 3D Mario games, but it's more refined, more polished, more detailed. There is a beautiful amount of detail in everything, from the environments to the smallest facet of individual character models. The game runs in 720p in handheld mode and 900p in docked mode. In both docked and handheld mode, the game runs at a fluid 60 frames per second. While I know not everyone will love the resolution or the graphical style, I think the game looks excellent. In both docked and handheld mode, so I'm giving it an amazing. 
When it comes to music, everyone points out Jump Up Superstar, and yeah, it's an amazing song. The rest of the soundtrack is pretty good, with some standout tracks here and there. To keep spoilers to a minimum, I want to use Honey Loon Ridge as an example where the game captures atmosphere perfectly. Overall, I think the soundtrack is fine, with one song that stands above the rest, so I'm going to give it a great. When this game was first announced, I was like, neat, a new 3D Mario game. As time went on, people got more excited as they revealed new aspects of the game, and my reaction, while fascinated, stayed pretty tempered. And then like two days before the game came out, everyone was freaking out with excitement, and I just really didn't care. What I'm saying is that up to and even during release, I had no hype for this game. When I first played this game, that lack of hype reflected, and I didn't really care for the game that much. I mean, there were certain elements I liked, but nothing really stood out to me. Then I got to a sequence about halfway through the game, and everything changed. Without wanting to spoil anything, I went from being somewhat positive on this game to absolutely loving it. I even shed a tear. Honestly, it was amazing. From there on out, I fell in love with the game and everything it did. By the end, I was just blown away, especially with the ending set piece. Again, not wanting to spoil anything. The thing is though, even though I loved it, when it came around to getting all the moons, there were points where the game's flaws became overly apparent. It's not a perfect game. Nevertheless, I did 100% complete this game, and it does get tedious at points. This is also one of the few games I've 100%ed and the first one I've done in years. What this game accomplishes, the feelings it's able to capture, I couldn't imagine that happening up until now. While it didn't change my mind about gaming or make me fall in love with gaming all over again, it gives me an experience I don't think I'll ever forget. And for that, I'm going to give it a golden and say it belongs in the pantheon of all the other revolutionary Nintendo games. I would recommend this game to anyone, whether a new fan or someone who hasn't played a Mario game in years. There's bound to be something to enjoy. And with Mario Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, there's no way I couldn't recommend picking up a Switch.